Okay, so going back to connectors for a little bit, this is in response to a friend of mine's question about how to use them. I'm going to create two connectors. One is a curve morph with a label test A. Notice that apparently you can have more than one bit of text associated with one of these morphs. I'm going to call it the first node and I'm going to create a second node, test B, which is an ellipse morph. And I'm going to create a connector from A to B. Now my friend was asking, how the heck do you know what is connected from A to B? Well, it turns out that the if you look at a node, like the first node, A, and you ask it for its connected constraints, let's inspect them, you get a set which happens to have one item. Now if you looked at this, it would have several items. This node right here would have several items. If we inspect it, I have no idea why that happened. Um, if we inspect it, we will see that it has self-connected constraints print it it actually has one two three four five of them and in fact one two three four five are the connections so with this first one we only need the first connection there happens to be only one so we request the first connection and we find it's a line constraint. And then we want the owner, I found out the hard way, which is connector morph, which is the thing that goes between the two of them. And then if we actually request the connected morphs, we get the first and last morphs that is connected to the ellipse the curve, which is uh, defaults to a diamond shape, and the ellipse, which is an ellipse. And if we check, we can add an arrow to our um, connection, make forward arrow, and now it goes from A to B with a little arrow pointing forward from the beginning to the end. But if we check, our connected morphs are still the ellipse morph, which is the end of the curve morph, which is the first morph, and the ellipse morph, which is the last morph. Now we can add another line if we want. You can't see it yet. There we go. See, I added it. And if we wanted, we could say connected constraints second. And we would still get this thing. We would get a curve morph. as the first, and ellipse morph is the second. Now, what if we did this? Both arrows. We would in get, indeed still get the same first and last. But what if we connected it the other way and said, how about E equals from morph B to morph A, and we're going to make a forward arrow and then we're going, that forward arrow is sent as a message to this connector that we just created. And now I'm going to cascade the reference to yourself, which is the first object. So this object here is referred to by yourself, and yourself is put into E. That's just a little convention so that you won't get some strange, unexpected behavior. At least to me, it's unexpected. So let's make that. Let's see what happens. We're going to make a connected morph from B to A. And sure enough, there's a new arrow from B to A. 
and if we were to check and see what the uh, constraints are for our third connector second third we would see that it goes third print it goes the other way now the first morph is ellipse morph and the second morph is a curve morph so you can see the arrows go the other way depending on which one was designed was designated as the from morph and the to morph that makes sense doesn't it so that is basically how you can find out what node here is connected to what node here. You could go through with the array of nodes I created to make this little star pattern and find out each of the connectors and you could actually make some kind of graph theory type array out of everything. Or you could go the other way and take a graph array um, edges and nodes array as you see in uh, computer science classes and turn around and create these edges and nodes from from that array so it's it's a pretty slick and powerful little system now deciphering how it works since there's no documentation is the subject of an entirely different tutorial altogether